decide what to do with the Arabs on the land or our enemies and want to kill us. If we had that attitude, we, we would be able to get rid of the problem. Mary always said, we don't have an Arab problem, we have a Jewish problem. The Arabs the problem will take care of itself. We have a Jewish problem. We have Jews who don't know what it means to be Jews. We have Jews who do not want Torah Judaism to be victorious here in Eretz Israel, and they're fighting. They'd rather go to the Arabs, ultimately, if they can't keep it. They know they can't keep it because they're being outpopulated by the Frum communities all over Eretz Israel. So in a matter of 20, 30, 50 years, the, the vast majority of the Knesset would be, if it's still Eretz Israel, would, would be a, a, a Frum Knesset. But they don't want that. So they're trying as hard as they can to throw it all away now, especially the, 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 the Makomas Kadoshas, like, like Harabias and like Hebron and like Kever Rafo and what they did to Kever Yosef. They're trying to get rid of it because they don't want any connection. They want to be a secular nation like all the other nations in the world. That's all they care about. And if they can't have that, they'd rather the Arabs have it than the Jews. We have to know this is true. The mayor said, we have to know that this is the truth of what these people are and who they are. And we have to fight them with, every, uh, with everything we can because we know this is Eretz Yisrael. It's Hashem's land. He wants it for the Jewish people to keep Torah and mitzvahs and to build a, build an a, a Orla going to build a nation, a one place on earth that sal salvages uh, the, the, the soul of mankind and makes them have a, a recognition of what Hashem created human beings for in the first place. And in order to do that, we need Eretz Yisrael. We can't do it anywhere else, or we would have been able to do it anywhere else in, in, in the Gullahs. We would have been able to accomplish this already. Hashem brought us back to the land, and if we're not going to be strong for ourselves, and we're not going to recognize the fight is like the, the fight of the Hanukkah story against the Hellenists. It's that same fight all over again. The Hellenist Jews in the time of Hanukkah gave up. They said, these going are too strong for us. We're going to collapse. We're going to cave to them. We don't want to die. We're tired of being put in a position where we have to get, lay our lives down for the Torah. We're going to concede that they're more... They're mightier than us, and we're going to concede. And not only did they concede and become themselves uh, a, a rebels against Torah Judaism, but they wanted to make sure everybody else rebelled. And so therefore they fought and killed Jews and, and persecuted Torah sages and chased and persecuted the, re the, the religious communities a until the uh, time of Matisyahu when, when, the, when the rebellion of the Hashmanoim started. That's, that's unfortunately what we're leading to now. They won't, leave, they won't play fair. Rabbi Mayer said, let's have a referendum. Let's have a choice. Do we want, now it would be, do we want this Oslo process? But before, do you want this intifada? Do we want, we want to take a vote of the people. We don't want anymore the Knesset representing us. We want a plebiscite. We want to have our choice. The people want to vote, yes or no. Do we want to annex the territories? We don't want to annex the territories. We, do we want to keep the areas we want to throw? We want the people to decide, not make a government to make the decision for us. And he, and he says, they'll never give us this referendum. If they're not going to give us this referendum, they're going to end up with a revolution. Not because I'm threatening a revolution, but because it's going to be automatic. You're going to push the people to the point of no return, to the breaking point where their lives, their children are being slaughtered on the streets all the time throughout Eretz Yisrael, in the, especially in the settlements. Every day there is mice, and we don't hear about it because the, 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 the media refuses to report it so the Arabs don't look bad. And so they can keep this farce of the peace process going, which is, which is not a peace process, it's always been a death process. It's always been a, de a destroy Israel process. And the only way they can convince us of this is by keeping the truth from us, especially American Jews here in America. It, 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 they never report it so that they won't be able to, to, to they, they don't want to have that, we would know the truth of what's really the story over there. It's such blatant lies from the presidents that we've had on down to the prime ministers that we have. They're all playing this, game, this sick game of, of international diplomacy. It's a fraud. It's all lies. And the mayor says we have to stand up and fight for Eretz Yisrael, and fight for Judaism, and fight for Hashem's right to rule here. And that's what he was about, that's what he gave his life for. Yeah, you wanna ask a question? Yeah. Okay. Um, if Reb Meir was as great a Jew as you claim him to be. I don't like to say that question already, but go on. <laughs> why isn't his 
uh, his, his uh, philosophy taught in orthodox learning establishments in the 27 years since his death. I would, I, would, I would venture to say there isn't two rabbis in all of America who understood what he had to say. They believe everything they've been told, which is lies. People were afraid of him, not only in the secular uh, Jewish communities, they are afraid of him in the religious communities because he was exciting all the, the base of the kids in his day and age when he was in JDL and doing for Soviet Jewry. They all were chomping at the bit to get out of the yeshiva and go demonstrate for Soviet Jewry. They were turned on about it. I'm not, I'm not saying that Gedolim were, 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 were wrong here, but they didn't want their, their kids to be demonstrating in the streets. They didn't want them to follow this man. And as a result, you, you have a great tobacco, you, even in the greatest places of, of the bastions of Torah uh, study and Judaism in Lakewood, New Jersey, you have kids that have dropped out. Now this is 50 years later, obviously, but you have a problem. The problem is you're not translating, uh, Rav Nachum talked to me, you're not translating the learning of Torah into the mycem of what the Torah is supposed to lead to. And as a result, what? What am I saying? Uh, the actions, the deeds of, of where Judaism is supposed to lead. It says in Perkyavos, Lo ha Medrashik or El Almasa. First it says, Gadol ha, ha, uh, Gadol ha Talmud Shemevi Lede Maisa. Great is learning Judaism, learning Torah, because it leads to deeds, it leads to action. And then it says, but it's not the Iker, Lo ha Medrashik or El Almasa. Medrash Yikr, Almasa. The medrash is not the main thing. The learning is not the main thing. It's taking what you're learning and putting it into practice. Vermeer basically stood for a lifting up of Judaism, which had been in the gullus, pounded in the Torah and the Jewish people pounded into the into the dirt. That that we have had a minimalistic view of what Judaism is. Basically, a kitchen religion a bedroom religion, a synagogue religion, but all the things that are not just individual mitzvahs that every Jew has to keep, whether it's Shabbos and Kashrus, etc. No, there are mitzvahs that are national mitzvahs that Rev. Wolf talked about tonight. There are national mitzvahs that all Jews are together are commanded by God to keep these mitzvahs like a king and like a base of Mikdash and like a, what to do with, with Jews and non-Jews in Eretz Yisrael, how to run a country, how to have a justice system. All these are, are national mitzvahs. We don't have any national mitzvahs. And the, the, the fear of these rabbis or communal leaders, whether they were in the secular Jewish uh, world here in America or in Israel or they are in the Torah world they're afraid that he was going to show them up for the, for the not necessarily all of them frauds and liars but just not knowing where to go and how to lead but where it, it's supposed to go but in 27 years yeah, since, since his death started learning I tried I went to the OU convention and, and and I said you're losing your kids and maybe you'll you'll learn some uh, Jewish idea with them in their schools in their high schools and maybe you can turn them back on to Judaism one guy says well we need a curriculum I said the curriculum is already here it's the Jewish idea by Rev. Meir Kahana I bet you that guy has never even opened the book or pursued it online to see what that book is about and that's the, the, it's a crime already. He was right every day people, I, I, there are rabbis in this town. I once spoke at Var Torah at a, at a yurt site for the, the Har, uh, Harnof uh, martyrs who were, were killed, unfortunately, a friend of mine. We went to Eula together in the college program at Eula. And the rabbi said afterward, well, that's very nice, Moshe. A very close rabbi of mine. He said, very nice. We know that Rabbi Khan was right, but it's too late now. He's not willing to, he was conceding that, it, that he's right, he was right, we should have listened to him, but now Nebuch is fallen, we can't do anything, it's too late. And then another rabbi just recently uh, said to me, he, uh, what did he say, he, he uh, also admitted, and right now it's slipping my mind. Uh, uh, but but so it's a power thing. They don't want to lose their their positions of authority over their communities, over their yeshivas. Over so they saw it viscerally back then that he was he was saying something that was exciting the base of their communities, and they they didn't want to lose their power. It was a simple power thing. So they hated him just as much as the secular Jewish 
uh, establishment. They were afraid of him just as much, threatened by him just but, as much. But how about today? Today, I don't know. No, everybody's still saying the same lies about him. Everyone's saying he's a radical rabble rouser. He would have gotten us all killed. Our children, they would, he would have done terrible things. Thank God he wasn't uh, prime minister. So, but is that true? No, of course it's not true. There are, they're either afraid, they're, 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 oh yeah, this rabbi mine, I remember just now, he says, we believed in the yeshiva that he was right about Soviet Jewry. He was admitting to me just two weeks ago, he said, oh, we, or last week, we believed that he was right, but we were too afraid to do anything about it. We were too afraid to go against our rabbis, and we were too afraid that something might happen to us. We were cowards. It's hard to, after you spend 2,000 years of being ground into the dust of Gullus by the going, it's hard to have any self-respect and self-dignity. It's hard to stand up for yourself. We were afraid that our kids will be killed or something will happen to us. So we were afraid to, we knew he was right. Uh -huh. It was fear. But even, but Lubavitch is, is about deeds and they go out and they put on a tefillin and they're, they're very active and uh, aggressive. Why don't they embrace uh, the, the Jewish idea. You would have to ask their rabbis. I, I, I know that Rabbi Kahana himself wrote in the JDL story or the one of his early books that he went to Reb Moshe Feinstein for a bracha. He went to Reb Moshe Feinstein. Reb Moshe said to him, uh, "Try not to become what you're fighting against." And he was very much against any of the kids in his yeshivas or in the yeshiva world going out for demonstrations. But it got to the point where Moshe said, they're so rebelling against us, we're going to make a symposium with just ourselves to say Tehillim and, and for Soviet Jewry. And so Ramarikana embraced that and said, well, at least they're doing something now. For, and he said to his Rosh Hashiva in the mirror in, in Flatbush in Brooklyn, he said, he, says, he said, you're causing trouble. You're causing trouble, Reb Mayer. He said, oh, he went to say good Shabbos. He'll be diving there for a Friday night and he, or Shabbos morning. And he says, okay, let's say I'm doing, I'm causing trouble. But well, I sat here for 13 years in this yeshiva and there was never a time when we stood up at the end of Mincha or Shacharis or Marav and said a Tehillim, one Tehillim for Soviet Jewry, been locked away for 60 years behind the Iron Curtain and just totally decimated any Judaism, the Jewishness they had. Uh, from previous generations. It was totally torn away from them, and we did nothing. And then finally he went to the Lubavitcher Rebbe. It says, he quotes it, he went to the Lubavitcher Rebbe, and the Lubavitcher Rebbe is quoted by Reb Meir Kana in his book, the J JDL story I think it's called, saying to Reb Meir, you are harming Soviet Jewry. You are harming them. You're not helping them. You're harming them. So Reb Meir took that very seriously, and he went, and he went, and he, I guess right after that, around 1971, this whole incident was, he went to Eretz Yisrael and he met with some of the ones that had just started to get out of the Soviet uh, Russia prison. And he met some of the leaders of the uh, refuseniks of, the, of, the, of the, the Soviet Jews that were trying to get out. And he asked them, when I was doing what I was doing, first of all, did you hear about it? He said, yeah, we all heard about what this Rabbi Meir Kahan was doing, and it was, it was amazing. And he said, did I harm you? Did the, the, did, the, did the Russian government torture you or persecute you more because there were what I was doing in America to try and around the world, trying to call, cause attention to your, to your plight, to your cause? And he said, no, just the opposite. You made the Russians afraid to do anything to us because now people were watching. And, and there was a very famous case they called the Leningrad 12. I thought it was nine, it was 12. They, they kidnapped a plane in 19, I don't remember, 71, 73. They, or, no, no, it's in the 60s, 69. They kidnapped, they tried to hijack a plane. Ooh these refuseniks to fly themselves, one of them was a pilot, to fly themselves to freedom outside of Russia. They were caught and they were arrested and the two ringleaders were sentenced, to, uh, were not sentenced, were gonna be put on trial for execution. The others were gonna get jail sentences for treason and they were gonna be executed for treason. And so Romero started a campaign based on his he was in Beitar when he was a kid here in America, and he, they followed Rabbi, uh, uh, they followed uh, Zev Jabotinsky in Beitar uh, uh, and his uh, Irgun, and, and they had a thing against the British. 
The British would capture these Irgunists that were causing the British to have trouble to keep their control over Eretz Israel, and they would flog them. So the, the Irgun said, two, two British soldiers or officers will be flogged for the next time you flog a Jewish prisoner. And they, they did, ah, Jews. And they flogged the guy, they, they, they gave him uh, 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 lashing, lashings, and they caught two, two British uh, officers and gave them a flogging. And that really shocked the British, uh, the whole empire. And then they put a guy on trial, and they said, no, we're gonna kill him. We're gonna hang him for, for what he did. He blew up something at the depot and stole some weapon, whatever. He killed a couple of British uh, soldiers. We're gonna kill him. Says the Irgun said, two British officers will be hung if you hang this guy. They hung him, they hung two British soldiers and that broke the back completely, and by 47 they were gone. So Romero is a, a, a child of, of following that when he was in, the, in, in his youth, and he said, two Russian diplomats for every Jew you kill. And they didn't do a thing, because they knew Romero meant it. They knew he was a man of his word, and he was gonna carry through with his threat. And that broke the Russian, the Soviet government was not the same after that, and, and it led to them opening the doors. And by the time he went to Eretz Yisrael, between 68 or 69 and 71, 50,000 Jews, the first Jews, got out. And it's, everybody else takes credit for it all over the world. Every yeshiva and every uh, organization, uh, secular and religious, but it's only Reb Meir who did this. But the idea of why be Jewish, our Jewish right. people's biggest problem today, we're not in the 70s anymore. Right. Our big problem is the loss of Jewish identity. Correct. So I would say you got to read his books. He's not here to speak anymore for himself. Why be Jewish, the Jewish idea. The best thing for adults to get who, who, who are good at reading still in this world is a seven volume uh, collection of his writings that somebody put together, uh, 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 David Fine, I think his name is. And he put seven volumes together of all his writings from his own magazine called Kahana Magazine and from all his, not all, but all, tons of things over the years from the Jewish press that he wrote. It's called Beyond Words. If you get that, like just the sixth and the seventh volumes on Amazon, you have a, a world of, of, of ideas and, and, and Torah and an explan explanation of what he stood for and why he was pursuing the, the, the goals that he was pursuing. And maybe there would be some hope in the Jewish people waking up. It's fear, it's uh, the feeling of, I don't want to have been historically wrong, Lemafreya, retroactively. It's a lot of things that have blocked the Jewish uh, community embracing him now and, 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 and basically uh, changing their policies. And one of the main things that Mayor Connor is also famous for saying, he said, he said many times uh, on video, which by the way, there's two great videos on YouTube. There's, it's called Why Be Jewish and The Yoke of Heaven. If you watch these, they're long, but he, he lays out everything he was about, everything that he's teaching, all based on Torah sources. Nothing is his opinion. Nothing is because he's conservative or right wing or extremist. Everything he says, he shows you the source in the Rambam, in the Gomorrah, wherever, Midrashim, he shows you the source in, in, the, in the Torah. And so, but he used to say, he used to say, the only thing the Jewish people have ever learned from their history is to learn nothing from it. We keep making the same mistake over and over and over again. Why shouldn't there be one place in Jewish history where we get out of here with our shirts on our back and all their money in the bank and go to Israel. Why do we have to wait until they throw us out and chase us out and we leave with nothing else but the shirt on our back? Why can't we one time, we didn't learn our lesson in Bubble, we didn't learn in Spain, we didn't learn it in Europe. In fact, they're standing in Europe again. I mean, it's not necessarily the Europeans, it's all the Muslims invading there, but it's like they're waiting for another Holocaust. Why are they still there? Let them get out now. The writing is on the wall, Europe is finished. God is going to wipe them out for uh, 1,500 years of torturing the Jewish people, and it's going to be not pretty. So let the Jews get out of the way. That's what Mayor would, would say. Learn your lesson. It's already happened once. You want another Holocaust? Get out. And the same applies to us. So we're a little 
bit more, this has been the best place, uh, bar none, in all of our history. They haven't slaughtered their Jews on the streets of America. Uh, the government-sponsored uh, killings and persecutions. It's, just, it, it's an anomaly. Well, but that doesn't mean it's going to not end. And if it's not the Americans who don't have the stomach for this, there's certainly enough Muslims here now that it's going to get just as bad as Europe in five, ten years. And we're, our leaders, our political leaders, are just as blind or insane or criminal or whatever you're going to call them, treasonous, to let them pour into here as they, those stupid leaders in Europe were. It's insane. You can see what's happening in Europe and you say, no, we'll let these same kind of guys in here and it'll be different, right? The whole thing of what is the definition of insanity, doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. Well, that's what the, the Goyim are doing here. The same as what they did in Europe and they're going to get the same result. So why do we have to be in the way? Let us get the heck out of Dodge before it happens. But what makes Muslim immigration necessarily uh, detrimental to Jews in because America? You know their ideology. Their ideology is to conquer the world for Allah. That's their goal. That's their mission. And they know whatever they're doing in Europe right now, all over the place, it's a cesspool of violence and, and, and disease and rape and murder. And you, If they're doing it there, their goal is to do it here too. They want to conquer the world. They don't make any bones about it. They don't deny it. They, they say it straight out. We just don't know how to hear. We just don't believe that it's really going to come true or they, they really mean it. Wow. History has already proven out. Hitler was spouting this stuff in the 20s, what he's going to do to the Jews. Nobody wanted to hear it. Well, he got his chance and he did it. Arafat was saying his stuff. He got his chance and he killed a lot of Jews in his lifetime. And we just sit here and take it. That's a mayor railed against it. You're seeing it. He would document before, look, I wasn't on his side when I was in college and I didn't understand what he was talking about. I thought he was a fascist. I said it openly. And I thought he was being an extremist and he was endangering us all. All these same things that, 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 that the, the community, I believed all the lies. And then I read the book. Um, I wasn't liberal to that degree, a liberal in American politics, but I wasn't liberal in Israeli politics. I was, my idea was, and this is what I learned from my yeshiva or Sameach, is that you Arabs stay where you are, and we'll stay where we are. And you leave us alone, we'll leave you alone, and when Mashiach comes, we'll have it all. You won't understand, but then you'll understand. And let's just have peace and get along now and wait till Mashiach comes to settle it all. And Romero says the, the, the Arabs are never going to wait for that. And if you have that attitude, they're going to start killing you slowly. Uh, death of a thousand knives, a thousand cuts. And, that, and that's what he basically said. That he, 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 Muslim immigration necessarily a threat to Jews specific or particularly? Well, to everybody, to America in general. But they, they, but they are going to go after the Jews also. They're going after the Jews in Europe. In France and in England, they're beating Jews up. There's all sorts of stories. But yeah, that's the thing. He wrote a book. I was liberal, and I didn't know the reason I was on not on his side is because I never read this book. They must go. He, it's in the early '80s. It's before all this stuff of intifadas came out, and he's documenting case after case after case of some Arab killing a Jewish soldier or a Jewish uh, worker with him. And he goes through tens of these in this book. And I'm going, nobody ever told us these things here. I was living in LA. And nobody ever told us these things, or in New York. And, and of course, now you have to get rid of them. Look what they're doing just as individual Arabs all the time, let alone what they're doing now as a community, as an, as an army trying to d destroy Israel. It's insane that all this was going on and the Israeli government was doing nothing. That the Israeli government was just making us take it. On the one hand, they won't throw the Arabs out, no matter what atrocities they do. And they've done horrendous things over the last 40, 50 years. On the other hand, they won't do anything to punish them, to make them have a deterrent that they would stop. And they would think twice about what the Israeli army is going to do to them, a government's going to do to them if they actually do this. They actually tell them, we're going to bomb your building now, you better get out. And they kill our people and we kill their buildings. We never take revenge for anything. They don't ever suffer any consequences. They, the, 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 the Israeli government is not going to let us defend ourselves. So they are lost all moral authority to rule because they are the first order, the mayor said, was if a government takes away your rights, your, in, your independence, your freedoms, your liberties, 
they have one thing that they have to return for the right to rule over you and take away your freedom a little bit. And that is that they protect you. And that is that your safety and security is assured by this government. As soon as they're not gonna give you that authority, uh, that, that guarantee, and they're not gonna back up their words, then they have no right to rule anymore. You have to take back your, 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 your freedoms and your liberties and say you're not the ruler anymore. They won't let us, they've abrogated their responsibility the Israeli government, they won't protect, they cannot and will not protect the Jewish people. They're afraid of what America or Europe is going to say if they kill too many Arabs, and they don't want to kick them out because then they're really afraid what's going to happen to them in, in the world, but by the Muslims or by America or by whoever, all the going put together. And as a result, you have, you have no, nobody to stop an Arab from killing Jews. The bottom line is, what do you have? You have you have, you have, they won't let you defend yourself. They'll take your guns away. They'll, they'll arrest you and throw you in jail. If you do defend yourself, even though everybody knows what you did was self-defense momish, you killed in self-defense, you, you, you chased them away with a gun in self-defense, they arrest you. So you, 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 can't, you, you can't win for losing. You're, you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. That, Remer says, is a situation, a matzah, that cannot continue forever. That matzah must break. He says, well, I'm not threatening you with a revolution if you won't change these policies. I'm guaranteeing you a revolution that the people will not be able to take it. And once they can't take it, you're finished. Because you can't rule over millions of people who rise up against you. You can't oppress everybody. You can't arrest everybody. You can't kill everybody. You can't beat up everybody. What, why did the jihadists who uh, eventually tried to blow up the World Trade Center, why did they uh, assassinate Rabbi Meir Kahani in New York City in 1990, November? The, uh, the, the Nasser, the guy who did it. And, and Sheikh Abdul Rahman, the blind no, sheikh. Why? Saying, wait, let me why? why? They, I'm telling you why. Because they said, well, we killed the big Jew. It was like a, a, a prize, a trophy. We killed the big Jew. He was the most outspoken. He had the whole people in the country, 200, 400,000 people with him. It was going to be guaranteed that he was going to come to be prime minister because he had 200,000 in 1988 that would give him 10 to 12 seats. And all the kids that were growing up and were going to enter the army in the next four years were all Kahanists. They all came to his rallies. All the Sephardic kids all over the, uh, Israel came nightly to his, to his rallies. They were going to only vote for Kahana. He would have had 400, 500,000 votes. He would have been prime minister. They saw the writing on the wall. War, uh, on the wall. They didn't want to admit that, that he was going to, uh, that through democratic process, being fair and just seeing who wins, they didn't want that to happen. They didn't want to lose their power. So they came up with an excuse. You're a racist. We're banning you. He wasn't a racist. He says, hating the Arabs because they're Arabs is racism. Hating them because they want to kill me and steal my land, that's not racism, that's self-defense. I'm not a racist. Any Arab who converts sincerely to Judaism is just as Jewish as I am. That's not racism. Racism isn't based on blood or skin. We have black Jews and brown Jews, yellow Jews. We have the whole, the whole range of humanity. It's a soul thing. It's not a blood thing, it's not a brain thing, it's not a, a skin thing. And that's another thing, we have this whole problem on the other website now, of, of uh, Kahanist uh, 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 websites, that they're, they're, they're saying that, that Judaism preaches white supremacists. White supremacism, that is absolutely sheker muchlat. Mayor Kahana says, I'm not a racist. Everything I say is based on the Torah. If you're calling me a racist, you're calling the Rambam a racist. You're calling the Talmud a racist. You're calling the Torah. You're calling God a racist. And when it's... Uh, uh, so, if you don't want to go into it now, we can go into it another time. But the bottom line is, there's a whole approach to understanding who it is of the Kananim, of the black people in the world, who are considered cursed by Noah to be eternal slaves. It's not every black person on the planet. It's only the ones that are descendants of Canaan. The one son of Ham. The other sons of Ham that were black that I know of, Mitzrayim, Egypt, and Kush, Ethiopia, they're not cursed. If you're a descendant of them, you're free as anybody else in the world. 
Only Canaan, because of what he did to his grandfather to ensure that Noah wouldn't have a fourth child, so that he, he said, uh, Canaan says, I don't want my father to have to share. It's bad enough he has to share the world with, with his two brothers, Shem and Yephes. I don't want there to be any more to share, it, to reduce and diminish my father's holdings. So he did whatever he did, and we won't talk about it now. And so Noah cursed him. He said, you're going to be a slave for that. You denied me a fourth son. So your fourth son, even though he was the firstborn, uh, he was born on the ark, which was also illegal and was done against God's wishes that nobody in that environment for the year of the mob or the flood should have children to reduce the amount of food and space on the ark. If all the animals had children and all the people had children, they would have run out of food. They could only store so much. They could only have so much space for their, for their living quarters. So the, 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 the Ham didn't listen, and he had a son, Canaan. So Hashem punished that son, and, and he had bad Midos, and he was the firstborn, but he was listed in the Torah as fourth son, after uh, Cush and Mitzrayim and Put, he, he comes uh, fourth, because he's diminished. And when he did what he did to Noah, so then he was cursed to be a slave. But it's only Canaan. And the other forms that are saying Reb Meir Kahana held that they're, they're all cursed and they're all slaves and, and, and any, any Jew who who's has a taint of blood from an Arab, from a black, they're not real Jews. These are all lies. And they have to be called out on it because that's not what Rabbi Kahana stood for. He's being misrepresented in his name. That's not what he stood for. He was not a racist. He loved everybody in humanity. He just loved the Jewish people more because there are people who were commanded to love them and he had to protect them from anyone who's the enemy. He, wasn't, he was an equal opportunity protector. He wasn't just protecting the Jewish people or trying to protect them from the, the, from the nations of the world, the Goyim, the Gentiles. He was trying to protect them from the Israeli government and any Jews who hated the, the Torah Jews, who hated Israel, who hated the concept of the, the Jewish people being the Am Hashem of being Hashem's people. So, okay, so we're gonna wrap it up. So this is his Yorzeit tonight, it's 27 years. We miss him like we miss breathing. That's what we need Mayor Kahana for. So we, know, we, we don't know where to go, we don't know what to do, we have no leaders, we have nobody, nobody to even take us in and say, yeah, you're right. Let's do something to try and further the ideas of Mayor Kahana. We have nothing, we have nothing, we don't know where to go. We're at loss. Only Hashem. We have Hashem. Obviously, Hashem is going to redeem us with Mashiach ben David. That's the only consolation we have. We're, we're just as 27 years later. Everything he said is true. Every, he was right about everything. He, he saw things that are just happening now, starting to happen, that he's already calling and warning us we're going to happen. 20, uh, 27 years later, it is starting to happen, or has been happening all along since he's been gone. The bottom line is, we're an orphan generation. We, we don't have what we need in order to survive. Only through the, the mercy of Hashem, the kindness of Hashem, have we even been able to survive these 27 years without Him. And that's, the, I guess, the lesson. The lesson that we take away from all these yurt sites and all these uh, speeches is that we have to find a way to go on. If we lost one Marikan, we have to become a million Marikanas, little Marikanas. Nobody can replace him. But the idea is that, that the, 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 you can't, he said many times, you can't kill the idea. You can kill, a, you can kill a human being, but you can't kill his idea. His idea is the truth. It's the real Torah, authentic Jewish idea. He used to do Or Rayon Ayudi, the light of the authentic Jewish idea. And with that, we can't lose. We will win. Just right now, we're lost in the forest. And we're still in the wilderness. And we have no power, and we have no money, and we have no uh, leadership, and uh, no weapons to mount any revolution. But we just have the idea. And the idea is like wildfire, like a, like, a, like a wildfire has to spread throughout the ranks and midst of the Jewish people all over the world. So you've got to read the books. That's the only thing left. You've got to read the books because there is the truth of, that to get through all the lies and fraud that they said about this man. He was speaking to you the real Torah. He was speaking to you because he really cared about you and he really wanted to save your life. He saw the danger that you're going to have in Eretz Yisrael and in America, Jews everywhere in the world. It's not just a picnic and everything's going to be hunky-dory for all time. He saw ahead of the visionary. He saw ahead far, far in advance, ahead of his time, 
all this stuff that's just happening now that we're in danger about. And we have to come together. And we have to start learning and trying to console each other and learn with each other to try and express these ideas and ask questions and get answers. Jewish idea beyond words, why be Jewish? Any the, 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 the videos online, the, the why be Jewish and the yoke of heaven, especially those two, to learn the truth, your heritage, your Judaism, your Torah, what God wants from, from all of us. And may there be only peace for Akla Yisrael, for Am Yisrael, and as I always like to conclude, Odevinu Chai, the reason we're going to win is because we still have a Father in Heaven who loves us and has made a covenant with us to, to redeem us. And, and Am Yisrael Chai, and therefore the people of Israel are always going to be alive. They can't kill us. They can't kill the idea. And they, the people, of, they can kill individual Jews, even six million, God forbid, of them at different times in history. They can't destroy the Jewish people. We're an eternal people because Hashem made a covenant with Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, and with Moshe Rabbeinu, and all of us at Har Sinai. And therefore, there is nothing the world and all the powers in the world put together cannot destroy the Jewish people and Od Kahanachai for all time, his words and his sacrifice, his Mr. Snefesh, his, his being a, giving his life all Kiddush Hashem is going to stand and it's going to inspire the next generations of Jews to come back to the Torah, to come back to Eretz Yisrael and to fight this fight for Torah and Hashem to win in the world over all of our enemies, Eter internal, external, in Israel, outside of Israel, we will win. Good night. Leos Neshama for Rav Meir Shraga ben Yecheskel HaKohen. No, Rav Meir David ben Yecheskel Shraga HaKohen. Elias Ruchni in Shemayim forever and ever.